Welcome to the presentation of a lecture from Gnostic Radio, a free public service from the Gnostic tradition of Samael Aun Beor. Gnosis is the root wisdom of the world's greatest knowledge. Gnosis is a universal teaching of practical science, whose goal is absolute liberation from suffering and the complete development of the human being. This lecture is one of hundreds available as free downloads, podcasts, or transcriptions. Our lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures to find teachings that suit you. Twice a month, Gnostic Radio broadcasts live and includes a free online classroom allowing listeners to see images, read related scriptures, and ask questions of the speaker. To learn how to participate, visit GnosticRadio.org. Gnostic Radio is a service of Glorianne Publishing, a non-profit organization. The lectures and radio broadcast have been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. To make a donation, visit GnosticRadio.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Gnostic Mysteries, Prometheus, Lucifer. We are entering into the second part of the mysteries of Lucifer. Remembering that we stated that Lucifer is a Latin word that means light carrier or light and fire or light and force. And uh, that is an energy that is represented in many myths that when entering into our own individual being, transform himself into Satan. So Satan is the same Lucifer, but blackened because of our behavior, especially our sexual behavior. That's why the Master Samael on the or stated the one who whitewashes the devil, meaning Satan, turning into its resplendent and primogenitary state, the one who dies in oneself, here and now, liberates the chained Prometheus, thus Lucifer Prometheus pays the individual with abundance because he is a colossus with power over the heavens, the earth, and the infernos. So Lucifer in his highest aspect relates, of course, to the Holy Tetragrammaton, which is Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, the holy name of God. And when that deity projects its shadow because it cannot enter into our individuality due to the fact that we don't, do not have the necessary recipient 
solar cristonic recipient that we often named and there are the solar bodies or electronic bodies that we had to build. And uh, due to that fact, our inner divinity that represents the Tetragrammaton, Yod Chava, projects its shadow. And that shadow is precisely Lucifer that turns into a black entity in us due to the fact that we do not know how to keep him bright. That's why there's a statement. Prometheus in Greek mythology, as you see there, is that uh, Titan that stole the fire from heaven in order to benefit humanity with that element. But the fire was a patrimony of the gods. Only the gods can have that fire. But Prometheus descends and gives it to hum humankind, and therefore he is punished to be chained to the rock in the mountain of Caucasus, or the Caucasian mountains. And as you see there, he is liberated by Hercules, because Prometheus means he who sees the future or overseas. While uh, he knew that someone, the son of Zeus, in the future, that was Hercules, was going to come and liberate him from that uh, uh, punishment that Zeus put on him. But of course, all of this is marvelous that we had to explain because otherwise we won't understand uh, what is all of this uh, myth of this mystery that in Greek mythology and also in the Bible is written but with other uh, terms. But knowing Kabbalah we can understand the meaning of this. So as you see here for instance uh, Hercules killed the vulture that was eating every day the liver of Prometheus. As Prometheus is chained to the rock and during the day a vulture comes and takes his liver out of his body, eats his liver and he cannot defend himself. And during the night he is healed, his liver is uh, built again inside of his body and the next morning again the same vulture comes and eats his liver again. And that's precisely the great, uh, how do you call, punishment of suplice, right? That this uh, God is receiving because he's a God, he's a titan. Of course, in Gnosticism, we know that when we address God, we know that it's not a person, an individual, but many forces, energies, archetypes. Prometheus is precisely that archetype that sacrifices himself for humanity because he's the only archetype that enters as a part of God within us. Upon him, is a shame of fornication. And that is the part that always knows how lustful we are. This is how uh, in Kabbalah we know that Satan always tells Jehovah how the individual behaves in the earth. Because we cannot hide from Satan. Because he's part of God. The shadow and we have transformed that Lucifer into a black 
individual, ugly, because it uh, shows or reflects all of our ego, defect, vices, errors that we have in our subconsciousness. But by annihilating the vulture that symbolizes lust, this is how he is liberated. So once a while we have lust, that Prometheus cannot be liberated from the rock. The rock, as you know, symbolizes the ninth sphere. We always uh, address the rock of Yesod that uh, according to the Masons in the beginning is rustic, but we have to make it cubic form with a chisel and the hammer little by little that symbolizes imagination and willpower. And by doing that alchemical work with the energy, with that fire that in itself is the same Prometheus. He is the one that carries the fire and in the fire is the light. But uh, that force can be used in different, in different ways. And that's why it is written that uh, Lucifer Prometheus is the twin brother of Hercules or the twin brother of Christ. When Christ is addressing or Jesus Christ is addressing Lucifer in the gospel, he says, you shall not tempt your God because he is the opposite, the higher part of that. But Lucifer tempts or Satan tempts the human soul within which that Christ is incarnated in order to purify it and to transform that soul into an archangel. If that soul, with the help of Hercules or Heracles, uh, this is written in Greek, which means the aura of Hera, the Divine Mother. Because the Divine Mother is the one that gives birth that Christ inside of the human being. And Lucifer will tempt that human soul, which is called the Son of Man, in order to annihilate every single animal element and to transform him into a superman. That is the whole mystery of this Prometheus or Lucifer. So is that part of God inside of us that give us sexual strength? Is the living fire in every matter so we will say that Prometheus Lucifer is in the water, is in the air, is in the earth, in every element. Is that fire that sustains life. So to pronounce ourselves against Lucifer is to pronounce against life. Fortunately, in the level in which we are right now, the great divinity give us the opportunity to overcome that fire and to use it for our own benefit in order to become an archangel. But first, in order to be an archangel, we have to be an angel. Before being an angel, we have to be a human being. We are not human beings, we are just humanoids. But the gift, the boom of Prometheus is inside of us, inside of everybody. And that is the point. Let us go now into the second graphic in order to explain this better. Here we find the quotation of Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to the 6 in which the Bible talks to us about the serpent. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Jehovah Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, 
Elohim hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for Elohim doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took all the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat like a beast. Obviously, everything, everything is hidden. The alchemical element is hidden there in those verses of the Bible. But by studying the tree of life is precisely how we understand it. Because the serpent itself, Nahash, is precisely in Hebrew. Is that fiery element that we have to control. Is not a serpent per se, but a fire that is serpentine and that develops in the, sp in the spinal column. If you see your spinal column, you will find the serpentine form of it. And that's why in Sanskrit, this serpent is called Kundalini. And in Hebrew, uh, Nahash. In ancient times, the Kabbalists that knew the mystery that we are explaining here were called Nahashim. The Nahashim, or the Nagas, knew about the mystery of the serpent, and they were working with it. And of course, here we are studying the tree of life. And let me begin from the top in order to understand all that is written there. Limitless light is what we call the ains of ore in Hebrew. Now, in blue uh, letters, we find Hillel ben Shahar, which is uh, that uh, uh, word that is translated as Lucifer in the Bible. But Lucifer is a Latin word. The meaning of this is glorified son of the dawn. The dawn, the beginning of any cosmic day, begins in the ends of or. That is what we call Hillel ben Shahar, the glorified son of the dawn. And of course, this glorified son of the dawn is Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, in other words, because the Ain Sof plus the three primary forces that form the first triangle of the tree of life are four elements that form Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, that we explained in other lectures and that we call the Glorian or Shahar, or I mean the Hillel glorified element that all of us have within because each one of us has his own particular Hillel ben Shahar part of your monad this is precisely what we were explaining that is Jehovah of the Bible and the higher aspect the shadow of that Hillel ben Shahar is sent down into the human being that is called Adam and that is placed in the upper Eden. As you see in the tree of life, we have the upper Eden and the lower Eden. This Adam that was made by Jehovah, the upper triangle, is represented by Gedula. Chesed, mercy. This is Gedulam in greatness. Chesed is mercy. So that is the heavenly Adam, we will say, created. 
by Adam Catmon, the superior being, and placed in the upper Eden. This being represents that humanity that was, was created in the beginning in this planet Earth. Remember that right now we are in the fifth root race. Previously to our root race, we had four root races. The first, the second, and the third root races are represented by Adam as an androgynous being. Androgynous meaning with two polarities in one body. Let us remember that this Adam was the name of that humanity that existed at that time. It's not one individual. All the individuals of the protoplasmic, hyperborean, and Lemurian root races. But it was precisely <coughs> at the end of the third root race, the Lemurian root race, where the division of sexes began, where we find that Eve was taken from Adam. So Eve is precisely the feminine aspect of that androgynous Adam that became divided into sexes, Igmal Kut. Because this root race in which we are right now is the terrestrial period, the most lower of the periods in which this humanity is evolving. So the terrestrial period of this present humanity began in the Atlantean epoch because the first three root races, protoplasmic, hyperborean, and Lemurian, were the recapitulation of other manifestations that happened in other dimensions. But in this three-dimensional world in which we are, we are physical. And that physicality started to materialize at the end of the Lemurian root race, our own particular terrestrial period that we call planet Earth, physically speaking. At that time, of course, is where the planet, which is called Kiel Malkut Earth, or Adama, which means ground, started to crystallize physically. And at that time, Adam, the androgynous Adam, was separated in two sexes. And that is what we call Eve, the physicality. So where they were being born at that time, individuals with male body and others with female body. Previous to that, there were individuals that were having both sexes in one body. So they didn't need sexual act. But when they were divided into sexes, forming the terrestrial period, which is called Malkut, then the sexual cooperation was necessary in order to procreate. And in order to do that, Prometheus, Lucifer, the fire, was indispensable. Because Lucifer is that fire that gives sexual strength to the man, 
in order to have erection, and to the woman, sexual humility in order to receive the phallus. And that is a patrimony of the fire. As you see here, according to Kabbalah, we find the four elements. Fire is related with Gebura, which means justice, and water to Gedula, which means greatness. The air to Tifereth, which means splendor or beauty. And the earth itself, as we are explaining here, is Malkut, the very lower part of the tree of life. This earth is the outcome of the fire. It's easy to know that when we go to Hawaii and other islands of the Pacific or Atlantic Ocean, and we see how the burning lava that emerges from volcanoes dry and is forming islands. So this magma becomes solid earth. And that's why in Kabbalah we state that Malkut, the solid planet in which we are right now, is the outcome of Geburah, because Geburah is a fire. Above Geburah we have Bina, which is called Jehovah Elohim in the Bible, or also the Holy Spirit, because in Christianity this first triangle of the tree of life is called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Keter, Chokhma, Bina. So in other words, the fire itself of Geburah is the messenger of the Holy Spirit, which is that pure sexual creative force that manifests in Yesod, the sexual organs. But in the androgynous Adam, that pure creative sexual force of Bina acts without any problem because the same energy creates, for instance, the Hyperborean is stated that they were himself uh, fertilizing their bodies and from their calves they were growing a kind of womb, was a womb, where the child was growing and eventually separated in the space and growing separated from that father-mother or androgynous being. So the energy of the Holy Spirit, Bina, was acting freely at that time and because humanity didn't, didn't, uh, didn't need sexual cooperation. But when the separation of sexes was effectuated, then the sexual cooperation was indispensable. And in order to have sexual act, the man needs erection and the woman humility. So this one element that is necessary there is called gebura, fire. You see, we know in this day and age that when the blood rushes to your sexual organ, as male as you are, you have erection when you are excited. And the woman, when the blood rushes to her yoni, sexual organ, she is excited and ready to receive the phallus. So, of course, Lucifer is an element indispensable for the sexual act. And that's why you find here, written in Hebrew letters, Gebura relates to fire. That Gebura descends from the left side of the tree of life to Hod, which is the astral light that usually we find when we go to sleep and we enter into the fifth dimension, which is the astral light. That astral light of the fifth dimension feeds the vital body which is our sexual organ, and also related with our vital body, the superior part of the physical body. So when that happens, then enters into activity that, that we call here in Hebrew, 
Geburael. See here that this Geburael is translated in the Bible as Gabriel, the angel which is before the Lord. This Gabriel is composed with Gebura and the word Yel, or El, which means God. This is, of course, the fire of God, of the justice of God. But here you find that Gabriel is related with the moon. When you study Kabbalah, you know that Hod is governed by the moon. And Yesod is also governed by the moon in Kabbalistic alchemy. Yesod is what is called in the Bible, Nama or Nahema, as we say it in times in the Zohar. And Hod relates to Lilith which is the black moon in the in Klippath. So therefore we find here that this Gabriel, Kabbalistically, alchemically speaking, is the fire of Gebura descending from the left side into Hod and to Yesod in the alchemist that is not spilling the sexual force. But if the alchemists do not take care of the gift of Prometheus, which is the fire, and reaches the orgasm or the spasm in the sexual act, then he falls under the control of Lilith and Nahema, which the Zohar talks very plainly. Lilith is hot. And Nahama is Yesod, the two moons, psychologi psychological moons, which are related with sexual degeneration. Nahema, Yesod, is related with adultery, prostitution, fornication. And Hod relates to homosexuality, lesbianism, and any type of sexual degeneration. The two moons are related with bestiality. But Gabriel represents the opposite, according to alchemy. That's why you find that this Gabriel, the messenger of the Holy Spirit, Bina, always comes to the initiate to guide them. So you find here then, that Gebura descending into Yesod becomes Geburael, or in other words, Gabriel. Remember in the previous lecture we stated that Gabriel was the one that presented himself before Mary, the mother of Jesus, and said, you are going to be pregnant by the grace of Bina, the Holy Spirit. Is Geburael the one that said it because it descends into Yesod and Mary represents Malkut. That is precisely the initiation that we call of Tifereth, the splendor, that any initiate is always hoping to receive or to reach a certain level. So this is how you have to understand that. And that is what the Zohar calls the descent of the serpent, you see, the left side, into Yesad and tempting Eve, which is our own physicality. In other words, that fire that is called Lucifer or Prometheus sacrifices himself from above, 
descends down and gives the gift of fire to humanity. When ignoramuses study mythology, immediately they think, oh, it's a fire with which we cook, or where we make a bonfire and we get warm when we are cold. No. That fire has nothing to do with it, even though it's in it. But the fire that this myth is approaching or is pointing, addressing, is a sexual fire. Because without a sexual fire, it won't be life, as we started. Without the sexual fire, we won't be here. You wouldn't be there listening to this lecture, and I won't be here giving this lecture. Because thanks to that fire, my father impregnated my mother, and I was born, physically speaking, and you too. So that is a fire that is a gift of Prometheus that unfortunately this humanity is using in the wrong way. It's very rare to find someone that is utilizing that gift of fire wisely. If you go outside in this city or any part of this planet, you will find that people are just enjoying the fire of Lucifer in order to satisfy their lustful things. So anyhow, that's why it is written there, you wrote Eve, in the very bottom. Because that Eve represents our physicality, that Eve represents our sexual organ, that received that gift of the serpent. The serpent descends and says, hey, what is this about that you cannot eat from the tree? It means the sexual energy. He says, well, Jod Chava, which is a superior part of the tree of life, state it. Don't touch it. Don't eat it, because the day that you eat, you will die. And then the serpent, the fire says, you won't die if you know how to take advantage of it. If you know how to use a sexual act, then your eyes will be open, and you will be like Elohim, Bina, knowing good and evil. You will be like God's. So the woman takes the advice of that fire, is excited, of course, sexually, and unfortunately, it's that eating of the fruit means reaching the orgasm and the spasm of the beasts. Because the only way to take advantage of that fire is by performing a sexual act between man and woman and sublimating the fire and awaking the kundalini with the seven chakras and then the eyes are open internally and you know good and evil but humanity does, doesn't do that every time that they go to the sexual act they spill the sexual energy out in a normal sex we will say like animals because among animals that's normal you serve the bull and the cow they spill but we have to understand that in this universe, there is these two principles that we addressed in other lectures. Those two principles are the fullas nitamnian principle, which is for the human beings, and the toklanus principle, which is for beasts, for animals. So when we go into the sexual act, if we transmute, if we sublimate that fire of Lucifer, and then we apply this fullas nitamnian principle. And when we are under that fullas nitamnian principle, the span of the life that we have, physically speaking, is about 12 to 15 centuries. Just more than a thousand years. So that's why you find in the Bible that Matusalem lived 900 and something, and many other great men lived in the past many years. Because they were under the full of Nitamnian principle that is commonly uh, is, is habitual in any planet of any solar system. 
That's why when the so-called extraterrestrials come to this planet and see that we no longer are on the, the fullas nitamnian principle, that Lemurians were, that Hyperboreans were, that the protoplasmic rays were, we are now under the Itoclanus principle, which rules the beasts. And due to the fact that we did take advantage of the serpent, what you see there, eating all the fruit. What happened? We, we reached the orgasm of the spasm. Then we leave the full of Nitanian principle and fall into it to the Toklanus and build inside lust, anger, pride, vanity, laziness, gluttony, envy, etc., which is very common in the psyche of all of us in this day and age. So anyhow, we call ourselves human beings, but we are not. We are humanoids, because only the humanoids fall into the Toklanus principle. And that's why you find, for instance, individuals that are coming to visit us, that visit us when we were in the Atlantean period with physical bodies, but we die because we enter into the law of return and reoccurrence, receiving body plus body plus body, or what the people call erroneously reincarnation, because that's another law which is only for those that are advancing in the higher level. So individuals are aware with, in contact with extraterrestrials in the Atlantean epoch, the same extraterrestrial with the same physical body return after time to our planet, and they found that the souls that they were in contact in the Atlantic Epoch are now the same souls but with other bodies, a more degenerated. And this is precisely sad. And this is one of the problems that this humanity do not understand. Because due to the elements that we build inside, we altered our psyche, which relates to Hod in Netzach, especially Hod, because it is the base a vehicle of desires. Kamarupa is called in Sanskrit. The Kamarupa, body of desire that we have within, altered the psyche, our soul in other words. Psyche is soul. As a consequence, as a consequence of this, the vital body, the very base of life of our physicality, is also altered. And of course, after that humanity in Lemurian epoch started fornicating like animals, the span of life started to decrease. And for instance, in our present epoch, in the Middle Ages, humanity lived approximately 160 years. But that were more degeneration and degenerated and degenerated. And this time in which we live right now, if somebody reaches 100 years, appears in Facebook or on the internet. Because life is shortened. So you, know, you're, you cannot even live now. It's so short. Some, some, somebody dies at 40 years old in this day and age. And it's because we are in the Toklanus principle. Our life is really very shortened. Right? That's why this is what we call the curse. You will surely die. You will surely lose that precious gift, which is at least to live a thousand years. So imagine, if you have a body that will live at least a thousand years, you will receive the doctrine, the instruction, and you will have enough time in order to do your psychological work, in order to develop your objective reasoning. But now, if you want to really take advantage of the fire of Lucifer, you have to be very active every day, any place you are, if you want to take advantage of that gift. That boom, 
of Lucifer. Otherwise, if you follow the current of this humanity that celebrates fornication, adultery, homosexuality, lesbianism, you will go in the open hall to the lower levels of clipoth, and then you will develop more, but as a beast. And this is precisely why we are given this doctrine in this very moment, in order for you to understand that you are between to be or not to be. That's the dilemma. And you are the only one that can take advantage of that because that gift is inside of each one of us. That's the gift of Prometheus. That's why you find here, as we explained in the previous lecture, vanity of vanities, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, is what it says the preacher. We explained that vanity, which is in Hebrew, habel, means also breath. The breath of life that is divided in vanity, one, vanities, two, three. Vanity, one, vanities, two, six. Everything is vanity, all is vanity, seven. Are seven vanities, according to Kabbalah. Or seven breaths that unfortunately are now trapped into our egos. All that breath now is really vanity, as we know the word. Not a breath, but a vanity itself. Observe this humanity. Everything is around sex and vanity. You want to be famous, you have to follow vanity. Women and men now, they are so identified with their own vanity, through which their lust, anger, pride and vanity, self-esteem expresses itself. And they celebrate that. That vanity is, is negative. In order to develop and to free the positive vanity, which is the breath of life, we had to annihilate the animal part of us and to raise the tree of life from Adama, the lower Eden. Remember that in the lower Eden was where Eve tempted Adam. Adam, in this case, Individually speaking, represents the brain. And Eve represents the sexual organs. So the sexual organs tempted the brain, give the forbidden fruit, and the brain liked it, as the sexual act also liked it. The Itoklanos principle entered into them, and since then, they start multiplying themselves as animals. And this is what this humanity is. We multiply like the animals. There's no difference. That's why this uh, Prometheus is always misunderstood, especially in Latin, when you receive the name Lucifer. So, taking account this, remember this, that we are spending here in order to understand, because all of this tree of life explains the rest of the myth in which we also talk. The next graphic, we see Prometheus with Athena, which is also Minerva, the goddess of wisdom, giving to the human being the fire. But now we know what type of fire, because according to that myth, he took the fire of the sun into a cane, that cane is our spinal column. There is where he deposited the fire, the sexual fire of creative fire. And that's why it was written in that myth that was Prometheus, the one that created human beings. He was the one that molded, as the Bible said, with clay. He formed with clay also the first human being. But that's symbol, of course, because that clay represents the elements of Adama, the earth, that build the human being inside of us. So metaphorically, Lucifer is the conductor torch which helps the human being to find his route through the cliffs 
and the sand banks of life. Lucifer is the Logos in its more elevated aspect and the adversary, call it Satan in Hebrew, in its inferior aspect, both reflecting themselves in and within each one of us. Lactatio, when speaking about the nature of Christ, makes of the Logos the verb, the first begotten brother of Satan and the first of all creatures. That is inside of us. Our goal, of course, is to go into the upper levels of our being and to become one. That is the goal. But the only one that can take us there is Prometheus, Lucifer. There's no other one. That's why we said Lucifer is a stairs up to heaven. But Lucifer is also a stairs down to hell. It depends which way we want to walk. So, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 to 7, we find this description here. And it came to pass when Adam began to multiply on the face of Adama, which is Malkut, and daughters were born unto them, referring, of course, not to one person, but to all the Adam that were at that epoch. That the Beni Elohim, children of the Elohim, children of God is how it's translated, saw the daughters of Adam that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. And Yodhava said, My spirit shall not always strive with Adam, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a an hundred and twenty years. You see that? His days will be a hundred and twenty years. It means that before there was more. Of course, the children of Elohim, or Beni Elohim, relates in the tree of life with Hod. Hod, according to Kabbalah, is where we find the Ben Elohim. And is related to Kamarupa, body of desires. It means that those individuals that reach the level of angels in past cosmic days, which are the Ben Elohim, when the division of sexes started to happen, physically speaking, they saw that the daughters, the female aspect of that Adam, was divided into sexes. And the female aspect were beautiful creatures, or the daughters of the Adam androgynous. It's the same race, but divided into sexes. And of course, when the two sexes are divided, the female aspect is the most beautiful part of the two sexes. And the Bini Elohim, who for them is prohibited, the sexual act, they saw the daughters, and then they decided to go and have sexual act with them. And then that's why Jehovah says, Adam is also flesh. I mean, this flesh divided into sexes. And here is written, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the Ben Elohim came into the daughters of Adam and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of all men of renown. In other words, these angels became with physical body, obviously. Those Beni Elohim were bodhisattvas of great masters that had Hyperborean bodies, protoplasmic bodies, Lemurian bodies, but androgynous. 
Now, because of the division of sexes, they were having male bodies, or female bodies, too. They, were, they had to follow the evolution of the races. So when they were having, of course, a polarized body, then they saw the daughters, and they felt the fire of Lucifer. Because the fire of Lucifer invites you always to have the sexual act. That's his mission. That's his action, his duty. So it is nothing negative with Lucifer. It's just a fire that gives you the sexual impulse. If you follow it, then you fall into temptation. But temptation is fire. And the triumph over temptation is light. And Lucifer always pushes the human being to the sexual act in order to build light within. But unfortunately, the only thing that we build in this age is darkness. Because nobody takes advantage of that fire. So, just have us thought that the weakness of the terrestrial Adam, you see, in the Bible is written, the men of the earth, the, the witness of the men of the earth. But they don't know alchemy. The real, the real translation is, the witness of the terrestrial Adam means the physicality. Because the heavenly Adam, which is the superior part of ourselves, is always pure. But the terrestrial Adam, with a physical body polarized in a male or female, always feels the sexual force of Lucifer. So therefore, was great. That sexual impulse was great. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. Lust continually. So in the epoch of the end of Lemuria, humanity was really degenerated, sexually speaking. And even having sex with animals, with beasts. We don't want to go more into that because there are many lectures that talk about it. But that's why it's written. And he repented, Jehovah, that they had made the terrestrial Adam or had divided the sexes because they didn't take advantage of the boom of Lucifer. And it grieved, grieved him at his heart. And Jehovah said, I will destroy the terrestrial Adam, not the heavenly Adam, the terrestrial Adam, the lower part, in other words, us, whom I have created from the face of Adama, the ground, you see, the earth. From the face of Adama is the terrestrial, the three-dimensional part of the planet. So when the gods want to destroy humanity, it's not always in our spirit, our divine soul, all that superior parts that we have that are pure. No, referring to us, the terrestrial aspect, because we are filthy. And if we continue living or being alive in this root race, for instance, we will destroy the planet. We are already destroying it. A lot of people are organizing themselves in order to save the planet. But in order to save this planet of the devolving way in which it goes is just by annihilating the animal that we have within, which is the cause of it. Greed is sucking the blood called petroleum, the oil, from the earth. And they are fighting, making wars for it. We are in the middle of it. We say, oh, we're, we are not guilty. Yeah, we are guilty because we have greed. We feed our greed in other ways. Our vanity, pride, lust. Who of here in this classroom is free of lust? Who in this country is free of lust? Or in this planet? All of us have lust. And we have to fight against it in order to overcome and to take advantage of that gift of Prometheus, Lucifer. So this humanity is Luciferian, of course, from the animal point of view. And all of us have crucified Lucifer, Prometheus, inside. 
in our uh, rock. So this Lucifer is not an individual. It's all the individuals. This blackened Satan, Lucifer, in us is not one individual. It's all the individuals. But we like to point always. Satan is there. In our group is holy. Filled with angels. Right? Fallen angels. But no heavenly angels. So I will destroy Adam whom I have created from the face of Adama. Both. Adam and Behema. Behemoth. The beast. In other words. And the creeping thing and the falls of the air. For I repented me that I have made them. And this is always happening at the end of every root race. The solar light, the creative force, creates a humanity. But when we see the Christic solar force is that this humanity is not taking advantage of the solar force. And they are behaving like behemoths. Plural for behemoth. Behemoths are beasts. Behema, one beast. So they behave like beasts. Then the sun destroys it. And this is what is going to happen with this humanity. No matter what we do. Unless the whole billions of inhabitants will choose the alchemical path and take advantage of the positive force of Lucifer. But that will be a joke. I don't see that. Only those that will take advantage of that will see. This is how you see. Now in the next graphic, we find this beautiful writing of uh, the uh, Greek mythology. When the, with Prometheus, which is Lucifer, crucified in the rock of sex, says, O divine ether, Breezes of sweet birth winds. Behold what I, a God, from gods endure. And yet, what am, I, what am I saying? Exactly I foresee all that shall come to pass. What is determined now? To suffer the fatal destiny that fate has given me. Better said, that karma has given me. For I know well the law of Hades, hell, or inferno, is unconquerable. This is what Satan is saying inside of us. That part of the divinity that can help us, we just blacken it as Satan. And mingle with the ego, descends to devolution. And this is how he suffers. Because it is the only archetype of us. That suffer for us. It's the only part of divinity that enters and mingles with our filthiness. The rest doesn't. Meanwhile, the only part that can tempt us in order to liberate ourselves from the ego. And is the only archetype that we curse. This is sad. You see? It's the only archetype that sacrifices in order to do the work. And we are blocking it. And meanwhile, we curse it. It's just fire. If we use it the wrong way, well, he goes with us to hell. And he's liberated after that when the ego is disintegrated. That's why uh, we quoted this from the secret doctrine. But we wrote in blue what we thought it should be written. Because of fornication, the gift of Prometheus thus became a curse. Though foreknown and foreseen by the host Bodhisattvas personified in that personage, as his name well shows, it is in this that rests at one and the same time its sin and its redemption. Because the Bodhisattvas or angels, the children of God, Beni Elohim, that choose women in order to fornicate, they knew it. They foresaw what was going to happen if they take and fornicate. Because humanity was without ego. Even the ones that didn't have uh, uh, bodies built, 
the senses were completely awakened. Lemuria was having the Master Samael says in his language, three, more than 300 consonants and 51 vowels. And they were pronouncing them. But now our language has only seven, well, in our school we find seven vowels. Because the M and the S, we take it as vowels. And uh, how many consonants? 20, 22, or 23, 27 sometimes. Because our language is really degenerated. In the past times, we spoke the golden language. And our senses were awakened. And we can, we can see, we, we saw all of what was going to happen. Well, we choose fornication because we couldn't control the gift of fire. And that's why it's the absurd justification that this secret doctrine states. For the host or bodhisattvas that incarnated in portion of humanity, though led into it by karma or nemesis from past cosmic days, prefer free will better said, evil will, to passive slavery intellectual insurrection, that is, self-conscious pain and even torture, while myriad time shall flow, to inane, imbecile, instinctual beatitude. That's wrong. Because with the falling of those angels, we didn't benefit. On the contrary, we receive more karma. But, of course, the ones that wrote that, they didn't know about alchemy. This, knowing such an incarnation was premature and not in the program of nature, the heavenly host, Prometheus, still sacrificed itself to benefit thereby at least one portion of mankind. Is what this writer says in the quotation of Secret Doctrine. Nobody benefits when somebody degenerates. Why are we going to uh, benefit with the fornication of angels? It's absurd. The only one that suffers, not even Lucifer, receives benefit in that. But because becomes Satan. Matthew Samael on the earth states, Vain thing is to mistake a downfall with a descent. These deities did not descend. They fell, and this is different. Therefore, and right so, this is why the Theogonies depict to us this divine Logoi as punished. Our savior, the Agnishvata, the superior titans of the Luciferian fire, can never be cheated. They, the whole here, were wrought in blue. Hillel ben Shahar, the glorified children of the down, mean the superior aspect, those Lucifers that were pure, glorified, those that didn't fall. Know very well how to distinguish between what is a downfall and what is a descent. So my own door. In that myth, you find how Hephaestus, the god of fire, you see, the god of fire, is chaining Prometheus. But that Prometheus symbolizes the fallen angels in this case that knew about it, but they didn't care. And they lost the divine aspect by falling into fornication. And that also is represented by Prometheus. So we have two aspects, the individual Prometheus inside and those angels, fallen angels, that fell into sexual degeneration. And that's why you find here Mercury, with the caduceus of Mercury, that represents the spinal column. He's smiling there, that's saying, you are punished because you fornicated. Because the Mercury of philosophy is the semen that is the philosophical water that we have to take advantage if we want to awake 
our mind, our mercurial mind, our Hermes, because this is how it's called in, in, in the Egyptian mythology, Hermes. But only by taking advantage of your sexual water, your semen, in the very sexual act. Then let's go into the next graphic. Master Samael says, what happened then with Moloch? What occurred then with Andramelech and his brother Asmodeus? What then with Belial that went with Baal Pegor? That and with what with Yahweh? Luminaries from ancient times, yet now horrifying demons. We are naming just few of them there. Because there are many demons, fallen angels, that we find in hell which fell into fornication and they became demons. But we have to understand that when we talk about bodhisattvas are precisely the physical vehicle of those deities. We're not talking about the superior aspect, that Luciferian aspect that we call Jehovah. That aspect always remained pure. But their own particular Prometheus Lucifer in their individuality is the one that through the human soul, evil will, fornicated. So now we have that these demons are separated from their divine aspect. The divine aspect of the monad suffers there because he's a stagnant, cannot develop because his human part is a demon. This is how you understand. That's why many people that study esotericism and Kabbalah, they said, but Moloch, Melech, was worship according to the Bible. But it is referring to the higher part. Unfortunately, fall, the demon were appearing and were demanding sacrifice of children for him. And that's demonic. The same happened with all Andramelech, Asmodeus, Belial, and many other uh, demons that are now in hell. And that some of people that practice witchcraft, demonology, demonology, I cannot even say the word, it's good, are worshipping. Because that is very common in this day and age. It's a lot of people that worship evil. They like to tattoo demons in their bodies. And they feel that having that type of tattoo in their body is cool. This is precisely what humanity is falling, unfortunately. This is what we can find. That's why the secret doctrine says, for the seed of woman, which is a sexual organ, or the physical body, or lust, in other words, Bruised the head of the seed of the fruit of wisdom and knowledge by turning the holy mystery of procreation into animal gratification. Hence the law of karma bruised the heel of the Atlantean race. You see what is the heel in Kabbalah? The heel symbolizes Malkut. When you study the tree of life, that's a heel, Malkut. The fullas nitanien principle that is about 12 to 15 centuries, the normal span of life, became itoclanus, diminishing little by little hmm? in the Atlantean epoch, because the Atlantean race was the outcome of that disobedience. And of course, we are now in the Aryan root race, in which we are very degenerated. That's why the secret doctrine states by gradually changing physiologically, morally, physically, and mentally the whole nature of the fourth race of mankind until from the healthy king of animal creation of the third race, the Lemurian race, men became in the fifth hour, our race, a helpless, scrofulous being and has now become the wealthiest hair of the glove to constitutional and hereditary diseases 
the most consciously and intelligently bestial of all animals. This is what we have. We have inherited a lot of filthiness. And we con the problem is here that we continue doing it. Worshipping that. If somebody, as we said, goes out of the closet, appears there in the TV, and everybody's applauding. We amaze this. Is. They're applauding degeneration. And they say that it's, it's good. They're happy. AIDS. Spreading like crazy. Well, like craziness. This is what we are. And of course, the heads of those individuals are the demons in Klippoth. To the right. Here we find another beautiful graphic of Prometheus crucified to the hard rock of Caucasus, which symbolizes sex in Yasad. And we quoted here the Bible, Daniel chapter 9, 21, 22. In order to point you, not only Jesus was born by the grace of Gabriel, not only Mohammed received the instructions of Gabriel, but also Daniel, because he was an initiate, an alchemist. It's written there, Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the ish is written. That means fire. And also man. Gabriel or Geburael, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Remember that Bina is understanding, it's above Gebura. And only Geburael, Gabriel, can come down and give understanding if you take advantage of the fire. Then, Daniel means justice too, related to Geburah. Then I wrote beneath what Aeschylus said in mythology. Referring to Gabriel, or to that fire that comes down, which is the fire of Geburah in us, what he says is crucified on us. That's why I said, or oh, I quoted, Behold, here I am, pain and crucified. This is what Prometheus Lucifer talks to us. By will of a God, though I myself am a God. A divine principle or archetype. My love for mortals, men, the only offense that bows me to this yuck. And of course, you see him behind, still in the fire. From the higher divinity in order to give it to us. So that's... Prometheus Lucifer. Let, let us to the next one. So, the ultra modern Prometheus Lucifer, frightfully devolving in time, has now become Epimetheus, the one who sees only after the event, because the glorious universal philanthropy of the former has, since many centuries ago, degenerated into selfishness and self adoration. The human soul will become the free titan of all, but not before the recycling devolution. Remember that, not before the recycling devolution has reestablished the broken harmony between the two natures, the terrestrial, which is us, and the divine, which is our God, 
after which the human soul becomes impermeable to the lower titanic forces. Invulnerable in his personality and immortal in his individuality, which cannot happen before every animal element, the ego, is eliminated from his nature. When human understands that Deus not facit mortim, nec lectatus in perdition vivorum, that means God made not death, neither had he pleasure in his destruction of the living. But that man has created it himself. When the man ate of the fruit, he ate also death. So we create it by ourselves. He will revocate the Prometheus before his fall. So of course, if we liberate our own Prometheus, if we make of our own Satan, in other words, a bright creature inside of us, by eliminating every single animal element in us, our ego, then Prometheus will transform us into another divine creature, knowing good and evil. Because the knowledge of good and evil is precisely in the ego that we have. And then that Prometheus, as Hercules liberate him, will give him a lot of gifts. Because Prometheus, Lucifer, is a shadow of God. And God absorbs, and then the man, the man becomes with objective reasoning. In this universe, the only reason to exist is to develop objective reasoning illuminated intellect. But the only one that can give us that is Prometheus, Lucifer, if we take advantage of that. Because himself in us is that fire that we feel in the blood when we are sexually excited. But we go going to do degeneration, then we blacken him more and more and becomes more horrible and horrible. So the devil that is horrible with horns and that everybody is afraid of him is each one of us inside. That devil is precisely Satan that takes the shape of all our lustful elements, angry elements, envy, pride, vanity, etc. And that's why it is stated that if we can see how that archetype called Lucifer is in us, if we can see it in the mirror, it says, Lucifer, show me how you are within me. You remember the picture of Dorian Gray? That's the same meaning. He's taken advantage of his own Lucifer in the wrong way. And physically, as we are here, we look different, right? Because all of us are vain. We shave, we go to the hairdresser, and we like to wear the best uh, uh, dress to look nice, perfumed. But inside, we have a monster. And we have no if the, 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 I mean the courage to see it. If we see it, we will fall death there. Because we don't even imagine how monster, how horrible is that inside of us. But, but meanwhile, we think that we are beautiful. Miss America, Mr. Universe, Mr. Olympia, and all that showing their bodies and very well strong, etc., right? And makeup, etc. But nobody is, I would like to see it says, now we will see the ego of this Mr. Universe. <laughs> it will show there, there are with magic to show him or to show it to, to the public. The public will scream and run away. The same with Mr. Um, Mrs. Or Miss America, I mean, or Miss Universe. You see them? When they appear now, there was a Miss America there or, or Miss Universe. And there are beautiful women there, really, really well shaped, physically speaking. But inside, if you can see inside, oh my God, my goodness. 
You would like to see that. Believe me. Okay. Now you can ask your questions. Yep. Don't even touch it, he said, right? Yeah. Well, to eat it, of course, means to uh, reach the orgasm. And touch it referred to the different vices, which are very common in this day and age. Men and women touch themselves when they are in solitude in order to gratify their lust. And the only way in which the organ can be touched, the male sexual organ can only be touched by the vagina. And the female vagina can only be touched by the virile member of the man in the sexual act. That's what is there. Mm. And to take advantage of the fire. Right? But obviously this humanity eats of the fruit and touch the fruit in different ways. And this day and age is, is very common. They are enjoying of course the boom of Prometheus, Lucifer, and that's why each one of us has his own Prometheus, Lucifer, crucified to the stone. But here, as you see there, here, this beautiful video, it says, be careful with the fire. Because it's a damnation right now for us, unfortunately. It was a beautiful gift, divine gift, but now it's a damnation. And it is what uh, is taken down. Humanity down into the abyss. There's questions here? Is it possible to recover the lifespan of the Middle Ages individually in this lifetime? If it's possible to recuperate, to gain again the lifespan of the Middle Ages, 160 years old, yeah, it is possible and beyond. That's why Master Samael on the Or gave us the sacred rites of rejuvenation in which he teaches the way in which we can pray to be now the Holy Spirit through the intersection of our own particular divine mother which is the feminine aspect that gives us birth to this physicality and by performing these exercises and transmutation little by little we can recuperate years there are monks in certain monasteries in Asia that perform these rites of rejuvenation every day, not only one time, but many times. And uh, monks that have uh, three or 400 years old, and they look like 30 or 40 years old. But they are, of course, uh, uh, joining this uh, type of exercises with prayer, and with the annihilation of the ego. It's not only by performing the, the rites, it's by also annihilating the ego. And by sacrificing ourselves for humanity, giving something, because karma is also related with it. Remember that. Karma is unfortunately related or inherit, inherited by the ego inside of us. That altered the vitality in our physical body. And therefore, we die and have many types of diseases. So, yes, there is a way. And uh, fortunately, we have the book if you want it. And if you already have it, practice it. Does the 10,000 referred to in the video, 10,000 egos? Is the 10,000 referred to in the video, 10,000 egos? The 10,000, yeah, of course. It is, uh, it is symbolic. Let us understand this. In Kabbalah, Aleph is a thousand. Ten thousand is also related to Aleph. The letter Aleph, which is the breath of God, Keter. When the, we state that there are ten thousand egos, 
It doesn't mean literally that we have 10,000 egos. That will be absurd. Who will go inside of the consciousness and count them? One, two, three, until reaching 10,000. Right? No. That is Kabbalistically symbolic. Because 1,000 was killed by Shemuel. And David killed his 10,000. That is Kabbalistically. Ten symbolizes the tree of life, meaning that if we reach Keter from Malkut to Keter and clean all the tree of life inside of us, when we reach 10,000, Kabbalistically. It doesn't matter if in every sephira we annihilate certain quantity of egos. Right? Don't fall into the mistake of thinking, oh, I, let, I annihilated four today, so I have 9,996 more. Right? No, this is Kabbalah. Everything that the Master Samael taught is Kabbalah. So yes, there is 10,000, Kabbalistically speaking. The tree of life, 10 sephiroth. Another question? How do we combat temptation during the fiery act? How do we, con how do we conquer temptation during the fiery act? Well, that's a good act uh, question that uh, will be answered every time that we do the sexual act. We have to pray. Because remember that Lucifer is just the fire. Beneath, Bina, the Holy Spirit. Bina, the Holy Spirit is a white dove and also the Divine Mother inside of us. So during the sexual act, we have to pray to the Divine Mother because she is in our physicality. Remember that the Holy Spirit Bina is the superior part related with our brain of the waters of sexuality, while the Divine Mother re uh, relates to the sexual waters in a sexual organ, whether we are male or female. So when we are in a sexual act, of course, we have to pray her in order to intercede for us with Bina, which is above Lucifer, which is being above Gebura. You see, this is important also now, it's coming into my mind. Zohar states that Satan is Samael, and Samael is Satan. If you don't know how to read alchemically, you will think, oh yeah, Samael is the demon or it is Satan that is going to control the whole world. No. Samael is an archangel related to Geburah. And since Geburah has the Geburael, the fire of, of God in it, obviously Samael controls that. That's why the teachings that we are teaching now, Samael knows very well what we are teaching, teach, uh, teaching here. Because he is a very Logos, or Christ, we will say, of Geburah. And that's why this God said, Samael is Satan. Yeah, he's Satan. Yes, Samael is Satan. But in each one of us, you understand that? Samael, the fire of God, Geburael, Gabriel, descended into us and became Satan. Now we had to whiten that and to transform that into our own particular Samael. This is how we understand Zohar. Because if we don't understand what the fire is, we will fall into the mistake of many Kabbalists that think that Samael is Satan itself. When Samael is only the Logos that controls Geburah. And that Logos has his own archetype in each one of us, called Samael. But in, al in alchemy, we call it Geburael. You see? This is how we... In the invocation of Salomon, we said to the right, O Gedulael. And to the left, we said, O Geburael. And in the center, we said, O Tiferet. Related to our monad. Obviously, Geburael is a god of Geburah. And the god of Geburah in the world of creation is Samael. So Samael, Satan, is the same in us. Don't mistake that with Samael on the or, because Samael on the or disintegrated all his ego. Therefore, his own particular individual, Satan, became Lucifer again. He's enlightened. But Samael, in each one of us, is Satan, because he's blackened. 
but he gave us the power. When I was in Mexico, I remember talking with him, the Master Samael, and I said, Master, what do we do if I don't have sexual strength, erection, in a moment when we are going to have a sexual act? Well, he says, concentrating me, and then you will have it. Of course, I understood immediately. He's referring to my own particular Samael, the fire that will rush to my blood and give me sexual strength because he is the one that controls all the archetypes, not only in each one of us, but all of those archetypes in the plant kingdom, animal kingdom, mineral kingdom, because he is a logos. And this is how we have to understand when we read that the Zohar always accused Samael of being the one that sent this humanity to hell. If we understand that Samael, Prometheus, Lucifer, or Christus Lucifer, is that part of us that send us to this level, then we understand it. So yeah, of course, it is right. But when you don't know alchemy, is how you find in, in Israel. I was talking about Samael, and immediately it was, oh, the Zohar states that Samael is evil. And I said, yeah, I read that many times. It's evil within you, is it? But not outside, because the Logos is the Logos. He sent his fire and the gift to each one of us. We receive that boon inside. If we use it in the wrong way, don't blame him. Blame yourself. Because you have free will. We are not marionettes. We can use that fire in the good way or in the bad way. This humanity chooses the bad way. Well, good luck. Bye-bye. What can we do? But if we want to do it in the right way, well, that's why we're teaching here his doctrine. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So is that a different level of Lucifer in that because you just said you can't really be prayed by the Divine Mother in a sexual act because Lucifer is already so why, why can't you pray to the realm of things that are in a, in a sexual act because it's spread? Well, bec well, if you said Hillel ben Shahar of the upper state, of course, is your own monad. That monad works through Bina, which is the Holy Spirit but sends his shadow. And that shadow turns into us, into Satan. And that part of that shadow is part of that light too. So if we invoke Hillel ben Shahar, then we are also touching Satan. Help me! No, 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 no. Ask help to your Divine Mother, because Satan has to be killed. You know? Satan has to, like Master Jesus represent, because it's the same myth. Jesus crucified on the cross, because the cross symbolizes the phallus and the vagina. Interchange. That is the cross. It, and it, that is precisely the way in which Prometheus works. That's why it's crucified there on the rock. The rock is sex. The same myth. The same meaning. Right? But then you had to ask for the liberation of your own particular Lucifer, who is chained to the rock, has a lot of defects, vices and errors. If you ask that, then your own Satan will answer with lust, because it's mingled with lust. But if you pray to your Divine Mother, which in this case is Athena, then Athena will pray to the Holy Spirit, and then you will receive willpower in order to control that temptation in the very sexual act. And then you will transmute. But if you forget your divinity, and then Lucifer will play with you. Because this is what Lucifer does. You know, listen to this very carefully. Lucifer in us is trapped in the ego. And he knows that the only way to be liberated from that vulture that is always hurting the liver, the liver is ruled by Geburah, by Mars. Do so you see the similitude there? Hmm? So that's lustful appetites in the liver. The vulture that is eating the in entrails of Prometheus. And Prometheus knows that. He wants to be free of that ego in order to return into his own level as Lucifer, Brighton. But he knows that the only way to do it is by annihilating the ego. 
And then he says, in order to annihilate the ego, the divine mother, the superior part of my being, can do it. How do I help myself? By tempting the human soul. He comes and tempts the human soul with lust, with anger, etc. In order for the human soul to realize the ego, meditate, comprehend, and ask for annihilation. And that's why his duty, when he's an ass as Satan, is to tempt us. Because if he doesn't tempt us, how are we going to discover our ego? You understand that drama? And if we fall into temptation, we enslave him more. But he knows that. So most of this humanity will take his own Satan to hell because there is two ways to liberate Prometheus. Through this Gnostic way or through nature. Nature will destroy the ego in hell until Prometheus will be free again and to go up to the Logos. And that's why humanity should understand what is temptation. That's why I said temptation is fire and the triumph of temptation is light. But in order to triumph over temptation, we have to invoke Christ, the superior aspect. Help me because your brother is tempting me. Hmm? Yes? Somehow seems to always aim at us seeking out for external assistance. What would be one way to just like sort of like get beyond that and say, I don't need you. To say to your own superior aspect, to say, I don't need you? No, I am referring to this essence called L. This, uh, well, L is, 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 L is God in Hebrew and also in, in Arabic. Allah it means, it means God, in other words, in English, right? Ya, Yahweh or Yahweh is a demon. It's not, it's, it's not Jehovah. This humanity, oh... Black magicians has mistaken Yahweh or Yahweh with Jehovah, and it's not the same. Yahweh or Yahweh is a fallen angel. It's one of those, like Moloch, etc., that are there tricking humanity because they are fallen angels. Their, their way is to trick humanity. How do we will be rid of them is by listening to your inner self, your inner being, your inner God. Because that's precisely the problem of this humanity. They always follow somebody else. And you don't know how this somebody else is. Unless he is, of course, a self-realized master like Jesus. He's written, his writings, I mean. Or the writings of Muhammad. Of all the great masters. If you follow the Quran, if you follow the Bible, but if you study them, from the alchemical, Kabbalistic point of view, you will be guided internally. And if you await your inner God, your inner God will guide you internally. But you have to find the, 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 the tools in order to do it. But Once you awake, then you are guided individually. We're not all of this so-called uh, Jesus character and Muhammad and all these characters, right? Uh, influence, all of them were influenced by the same four-dimensional essence, energy, with uh, pretty much the same messages, and it all seems to Im involve hierarchy and dualism. Yeah, of course. There is a hierarchy. We have to obey the hierarchy. You are, what you're implying is how do we do it without obeying any hierarchy, just by ourselves, without the help of anybody, right? Yeah. Well, anarchy only when you descend. The way that you are describing is when you don't respect any hierarchy, any rule, 
and you decide to go by yourself, by your own will, whatever is good and evil, you don't care, you do it, that is a way of devolution. In which you continue doing that, and nature will help you to destroy that, but in hell, by being there approximately a thousand years, more or less, could be more. And in that way, humanity is, is uh, uh, choosing that path, precisely, going into their own evil will, we call it, in which you use your will according to your whim, and you don't care what everybody thinks. Yeah, this is what everybody's doing. Right? But if we choose this path, and then we have to tune ourselves with our inner being, and our inner being will tune himself with the hierarchy. Because in the universe, there is always a hierarchy. There is always an organization, a government that we have to follow. It's not just like chance, like people think it is A&H, that this universe was created by the Big Bang, and everybody is there rotating by coincidence or by accident, whatever, and everybody can do whatever they want. That universe doesn't exist. Everything is order, mathematically speaking. And if we investigate the universe, mathematically speaking, and even the psyche, mathematically speaking, we discover there is an order. But whose order is it? Is there the order of the psyche? Is that order is inside of us. Other beings that acquire that self realization are ruling others like when you go into the school you want to become a doctor well you have to follow the rules of the university if you follow you become a doctor but you said no I will be a doctor according to my own whim well then you have to do something else if you achieve it but are rules in, in society the same thing happens in the universe there are rules and rulers when you enter into this path, you discover that the angels that religions talk about exist. And they exist inside of us and outside. And then if you follow the, their direction and you obey the rules, then they guide you into the hierarchy. But if you don't want, then you become a demon. And this is, this is beside the choice, to become a demon or to become an angel. If you do your own whim, you become a demon. If you follow the rules, you become an angel. What about not having a master above nor a slave below? For you are yourself a drop of the ocean. And if you're a drop of the ocean, then you're the entire ocean. Of there the is ocean. always a master inside. Well, inside, yes. But not there is always a master inside. And that's why great yogis, hermits, went always to meditate in order to be in touch contact with that master. Once you find it, wonderful, because then he guides you internally. But meanwhile, if you don't find your inner master, your ego, your mind, your defects and vices will guide you in the wrong way, which is precisely what is happening in this day and age. Right? What is your question? repressed down, would that not de facto result in a limited transcendence, a deification of a partial part of the human form, but not the entire essence purified and eliminated, and then that part which is left, the animal part which cannot be touched, cannot be broached, that would be left in a prison of our own making because we cannot address it. At least that is what it is in my understanding. Can you clarify, please, the difference and well, when, when we talk about sublimation, we're talking about the sublimation of the sexual fire of Lucifer. To sublimate it into a higher levels in order to create superior elements that we need as a vessel in order to eventually incarnate the superior part of that element that is fire. Because God is fire. As was when uh, Moses found the burning bush 
And that angel, which is the superior aspect of him, talked to him. Right? So God is fire. But the inferior part of that fire is Lucifer. And you have to utilize it, which is your sexual fire, in other words, in order to climb there. Right? But in order to do that, you have to repress your animal elements. Because your animal elements do not want to sublimate the sexual energy. Lust, for instance, wants to fornicate, wants to receive pleasure, right? That is lust, that's animal. So in order to do that, it doesn't mean that you have to repress it. No, you have to meditate. You have to dedicate yourself to the technique, the science, science of meditation. In order to comprehend in every level of your mind, every particle of your lust. And to annihilate it. That is not repression, but comprehension. Once you comprehend certain element, animal element, that animal element transforms into human. In other words, we have to transform the animal into a human. And that's a long process of meditation and alchemy. Repression is absurd. It's precisely what many uh, religions in this day and age do. Like, for instance, the Catholic Church. The monks enter there and they repress the sexual act that they bow for celibacy. And at the end, they don't accomplish that, uh, that bow, right? They always, you find out the scandals in, in, of the monks in the Catholic Church. Why? Because they don't know how to sublimate the sexual energy. They don't know how to transform the lust into chastity. And that's precisely alchemy. It's not by rejecting the sexual act. No, on the contrary. We Gnostics want to perform the sexual act. It's what we want. But we want to take advantage of that fire in the very moment of the sexual act and sublimate it in order to take light from it. And that's called sexual alchemy or tantrism. Then the Kundalini awakens, your consciousness have all the senses and you see it. And then you see that a lot of obstacles uh, uh, happen and comes when you're doing that. Because your animal lust in the very sexual act push you to fornicate, you know? And then you have to meditate and comprehend and it's a long path because you don't have one ego of lust. You have, uh, as Kabbalistic we were talking, 10,000s. And it's like an ant. You kill one ant and more ants come. And you kill another ant and more ants come from the ant hill. And you said, when is this going to finish? How many ants do you have? Well, Kabbalistically, you tend 10,000 ants. So you have to have patience. And that's why with patience, says Jesus Christ, you will possess your souls. No, it's no danger. It's no danger at all. I personally have years practicing it. And of course, we, I deliver myself to my own inner God. And he is the one that is guiding me internally. If you do it with any guidance, just for the satisfaction of your loss, of course, it could be danger there. But when you enter into this path, you have to deliver yourself to your inner God and to the masters in the internal planes that can guide you because the student is never alone. He's always guiding you internally. Even Lucifer appears. You know, when I am teaching this Prometheus Lucifer here, I'm not talking just because I study it. I study, of course, this. But I had contact with my own Lucifer. Face to face. And what he told me, because he is Prometheus, the one that sees in the future, 
he asked me, what do you want to know, your past or your future? I said, my future. And he said, here is. And what he told me many years ago is happening to me physically. And I'm amazed. But it's the shadow of my inner God. It's my own particular Lucifer, Prometheus. And I saw him very well. And in many, many times, he's just tempting me. He appears there in the, in, the, in, in the shape of a woman trying to seduce me. And when I recognize him, he just smiles. Like says, uh, you triumph. But sometimes I don't overcome temptations or any other ordeals he puts me. And then I walk and says, damn it, he just get me at this moment. And then I go and meditate because it's one ego. He says, now I meditate in this ego. When the other ordeal comes, then he says, He's always tempting there because he knows that it's a work that we have to do together, you see. That's what in esotericism we call a deal with the devil. Once you enter into the sexual alchemy, you are making a deal with the devil because Prometheus knows that that is the problem of his slavery. But many fall into temptation. This path is precisely not for everybody. Only for those that want to overcome themselves. Yeah. Um, did Samael and Veor lock many of the demons in Klippot? Did Samael and Veor lock all, uh, many demons in Klippot? Yes. All of these demons that we named, uh, he took them, I mean, as an avatar, and put them in cage in order for us to do the work. They can't affect humanity anymore? Or? Well, those head of demons, they cannot affect humanity, but others are free. There are millions of demons that are not like Moloch, like Belial, you know. Those are very strong. But there are others. All of us are demons, right? All of us are demons. And you know, in every country, you find a lot of demons uh, governing that country. Governing, right? So is, is the world Some demons want to, to renounce uh, uh, their way and become angels. Others love that way. And then we are in the middle, dealing with those that want to leave the way of demon and the others that enjoy being a demon. And unfortunately, both of them come to the Gnostic lectures. And those that enjoy being demons, they're just bothering us. And those that want, help us. How do we deal with them? Well, we studied the books of the Master because he taught us how to deal with them, right? But we recognize them. Oh, here comes another demon. And he's enjoying being a demon. And he's doing evil things. Okay, keep doing it. But sooner or later, we will send, uh, we will ask the master, and sometimes the master comes and take that and put it in. You had your opportunity. You listen to the lectures, no knowledge. You don't want to do it? Okay, come. Like Jave and all those, also down there. So, be careful. No better. No. Better in the sense that we don't have the influence of those big demons or big Lucifers that are doing, using the bone of Lucifer in the wrong way. Better if they are in cage, in, in jail, right? But uh, better now. Better when we are not Lady Eagle. Better in the sense that, you know, even though they are in cage, go into the internet and find, you know, many years ago, they were offering pornography, paid this monthly. Now you go and just by accident, you can go and enter into that free. It means that the Black Lodge is doing his job. As we advance and teach this, also they advance giving free to lust and many other things. So the two forces are now in battle, in the mental plane. And we are in the middle. The presentation of this lecture was made possible by donations from listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most Gnostic schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every single donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticRadio.org. 
For questions and deeper understanding of this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing and available from booksellers worldwide. Visit GnosticBooks.org to learn more. Thank you. May all beings be happy.